Hi everyone, welcome to the Jansen Art Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to paint some uh, wonderful, give you a quick demonstration, paint some wonderful uh, stroke flowers. And we're going to use all the palettes and the techniques from Paint It Simply. <music> The fun thing about Paint It Simply is that we're going to do everything as simple as possible. So with a lot of the lessons of Paint It Simply, I use uh, so a limited palette and limited uh, style of brushes. These, uh, uh, this lesson over here, this is on this tray. This is from a different DVD that lesson that we have here. This is uh, some simple uh, stroke flowers. And we call we classify these as with some Napoleon three era stroke flowers. They're a lot of fun to paint. I'll paint something similar to this, but a little bit different for you today. But we use a um, we use a very limited palette. We use very limited brushes, and we combine some of the stroke decoration uh, for that. Okay, and there there really are a lot of fun, and you can paint them on a, a variety of surfaces and stuff. What I'm going to do is paint it up here on a board. I have a board now. What's going to make this very different is um, I'm going to uh, step back onto my painting now I'm going to use long handle brushes so before when we used to do a lot of uh, really precise stroke work we get up real close and we use short handle brushes and of course you can alter this lesson to do that if you want but today what I do is I do a little bit more of what we call representational art which means that uh, we get a little bit more to the impressionistic side of it and what I'm trying to do is take my strokes, take my flowers, take everything I have and loosen them up and become more casual, which is more popular in today's uh, styles of decoration. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint it up here onto the easel and I'm going to step back. For the painting itself, what I do um, a lot of times is I paint out here on glass. Now, one of the first things that I do here is I go ahead and I put out my colors that you see here. These are the six colors of the Painted Simply and uh, they are, and I've also added out the uh, a pine green and today I'm also going to be using a, a quinacridone uh, violet but what I do is I just take off I just open up the two these are pure acrylic and I just squirt them out right onto the uh, to the glass surface here now this is a, a glass surface is a uh, uh, 14 by 18 glass tempered glass surface that I that I use a lot in my paintings and one of the reasons why I really enjoy this glass surface is that I can put, you know, a photo or a background, the color of the background that I'm working on right underneath the palette and, um, I can see what those colors are going to work like, uh, look like right on there. And I can use my value scale over here to help me adjustify, adjustify a value to see what kind of value I'm working on. So when I'm teaching and you're looking at a color here and you're seeing something, you can, oh, it'll help you adjust your eye as well to see what the value is, uh, right here. Now, this glass, you know, what I use when people say, well, how you clean it? Well, what I do is I generally let the colors dry up a little bit onto the uh, glass surface and then I take a, um, uh, a scraper it's a razor blade scraper and I just scrape it right off the surface now as long as you don't have any of this stuff which is the uh, the multi-surface sealer multi-surface as long as you don't have any of this into your paint you can use the glass surface you go putting this into your paint this is going to cause the the uh, heritage acrylics to stick to that glass and you won't be able to get it off so if i'm working with it pure acrylic like this or if i'm working with it global where the colors have a little extender mixed into them i can take it right off no problem i also have out here today a little bit of extender to uh, moisten up the colors as i need them the board that I have here is a 12 by 16 uh, masonite. I'm not masonite, but a uh, MDF panel, which I use a lot. Uh, I just made, I took some of the blue, the black, and the white that we have off the palette. And uh, then I added just a tiny bit of the yellow to it to make this kind of a light blue gray. And so that's just where I'm gonna start out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, come right down here. Let's start out first. I'm gonna use my fusion brushes and that's another thing I'm gonna use. Uh, you know, many times I use flats and stuff, but usually when I go to do stroke flowers and stuff, I'll do filberts. But I'm gonna be using the longer handle brushes this time so I can step back. Uh, you know, four, sixes, eight, somewhere around in there. This is a number eight 
uh, those will all be good size brushes for you to use today okay so whatever one that you want and again if you want to use the short handle brushes the short handle uh, fusion filberts and stuff and you know come in onto your painting and paint down here you can do the same thing it doesn't make any difference okay except for me what I've tried to do is get a little bit more casual look to it and that's what I'm going for so the first thing I'm going to do is just come in here to my background and loosen up my background I'm going to paint this mostly acrylic but I do want to loosen up my background and get some colors in here uh, to begin with. One color that I really like to get in uh, into right away into the painting is a version of my brown, my brown greens. And I do that by pine green and uh, some of my uh, uh, naphtha red light. Sometimes if I have burnt sienna out, I will use that. But with paint simply, we don't always have that. And I'm going to uh, come in here and I'm going to put in some greens and I'm going to come back to the palette here and I'm just going to loosen up my greens here and you notice I step way back on the brush and I'm going to push in some very casual marks here like this. I love the the pushing and stuff of the paint around like this. That gives you just so much interest uh, to the painting. Now you can soften these marks with a little bit of you leave some of your background color out. You can soften that but I want this to stay a little bit more contrast. As a matter of fact let's grab a little bit more of this and darken some of this down and put some strikes of it out here like this. So many times you see me when we paint lessons like this, I, I will make casual uh, paintings um, up on this. You don't see me usually, you usually don't see me do stroke paintings up like this, but they're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun to add some of this casual backgrounds to your stroke paintings as well. Let's, let's lighten up that to a yellow green, maybe uh, Get a little bit of white in here, a little Hansa yellow, a little bit of white. If I want that to be a little toned, I can add just a little bit of my red. Now, I use this red because it's warm. If I go grab any one of these uh, reds here, it'll cool it down. And so I'll save that for the lower part. But let's just take a little warmer uh, yellow green here. And let's just apply some of that right out here to the warm side of where these flowers. Now these will be covered up mostly by roses and stuff here, but uh, we'll have some fun, we'll have some fun things. And I'm gonna do stroke stuff on top of it. This is just to get some, you know, movement and stuff to my background, which is what I like to have. Now we can take that same thing here. Let's go down the other side, let's cool it. Now red violet would be very cool. So let's just go over here to our, um, or uh, quinacridone and let's just put a little bit of that quinacridone in here and you'll see I get a darker and slightly cooler color here let's save that here for the low side of this painting here and uh, we'll add a few very casual marks here I try to stay as much as possible way back on my brush so my marks are really casual and what I'm looking for is just some color to come off to the sides now you know and you can you can do a variety of marks and, and stuff into your background. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my lighter blue. I'm going to gray it here. Um, I, you can even gray it here with a touch of that naphtha red light. Any kind of orange would really gray this down. So if I put a little yellow and red to that, because that's the complement, the orange is the complement of blue. If I put that into this blue, it's going to gray it down. You could use black, but sometimes I don't use black um, because it's just too dead of a color here. And let's just get a little variation here to our, our lights up onto this side and we'll let this, I'll just drag this out, what we call granulate the stroke here. Just drag that out like that. And this will give us a, a sense of light to the, to the uh, flowers up here like this, an area of light. I'm gonna add a little extender so that make this paint a little more liquid and drag it a little further here off to one side. Sometimes I'll just put a whisper of that through into some other areas. And what you're doing is you're just breaking up and adding uh, some color interest to your painting. You can lighten it up, add a little bit more. You know, you paint, we're, we're painting um, for interest, for color movement. So normally I paint these stroke flowers, you know, when I painted stroke flowers before, uh, like, whoops, drop that, where we see this like up here onto this one. 
normally what I do is I have just a solid background, and that's the history of the, the decorative arts is they have these uh, solid backgrounds and they paint on those. But with today's, or with today's artists and painters, what we're doing is we're adding um, more movements and stuff to our backgrounds, incorporating background colors and movements into the painting and the look, and it takes it a little bit more uh, or a little bit closer to the art, to the fine art, and that's where I like to sit is between some of the decorative painting styles and some of the fine art and and uh, i enjoy the the fine art looks to things those colors and everything i i really really enjoy uh, those looks so i like to take some of these older napoleon three flowers or um louis the 14th flowers different types of flowers rose mauling flowers and everything up towards those particular looks which are popular today and um, increase the appeal of it. So now what you can do is uh, this little scraper that I use for a lot of things, it's a little bit dirty here, but if you wanna push that stuff off to the side here, you can just do this or clean off your little area really easy. And it's really, you know, it's really nice to be able to paint on the glass like this because you don't go through all your palettes and stuff anymore. Let's, um. Come here and let's find a red. This is naphtha red light. This is a warm red. Let's cool this down just a little bit. So about one to one. Naphtha red uh, light and quinacridone here. Let's put that down and we're going to have kind of a, a reddish flower here. Now I'm going to work this because this is still, even though this is acrylic, see that's still wet. So I'm going to work this right into the, some colors, some base colors of my flowers right into this. Now. It doesn't have to have a wet background here right now. You matter of fact, we don't need that uh, to really be wet. Uh, wet. Uh, if it is, just go ahead and use it. If it isn't, don't worry about it. Just use the color a little bit more transparent. You can add extender and make it uh, wet, but I'm gonna. I'm not gonna worry about you know, having wet color or uh, dry color or anything like that. I'm just going to paint and paint with the acrylic here. And what happens, happens. Let's go more towards a yellow, a kind of a peach color here. So I'm just going to add some Hansa yellow to this, a little bit of white. Let's go right up over here and, and uh, let's add one that's going to be a rose right out here or something like that. Let's step back on our brush. We'll, we're going to do strokes on this, but I'm going to keep it loose right now. So basically what I'm seeing is the round part of a rose where the bowl of a rose is going to go. Let's push this out here. Just let this, let those two kind of come together there a little bit. Move the color around. It's one thing that the, the stroke artists that we, of old, what we didn't do, and I did this for, you know, painted strokes like this for 30 years, uh, is we didn't really move our colors like this very casual. Um, you know, and today, of course, I do. I do like to do that. Let's um, come in and let's put another uh, kind of a flower down here, maybe right between the two of them. We'll put a little more color. Let's come with one that's going to come down to this side. Maybe this one will be more of a blossom. So we'll have one sitting between the two. And again, I just walk that color out. We can have some smaller flowers. Let's shift color over. We can have some smaller flowers. Uh, lean over to the blues. Tone it down with some of these kind of orange colors. And come right over here to your... your uh, uh, thalo blue and white. Let's lean into some blue flowers where we might have them again. Before I would come in and just stroke in perfect little blue flowers and now what I'm going to do is just hit some areas of the blue flowers here and then I'll, and then I'll come back and uh, we'll make some perfect ones. But I'm just looking at where I'm going to move some of my blue around and maybe we want to have some of these little blue flowers come right into here that would be pretty coming into there and leave some room here for some uh, leaves so what I'm doing is just each one of these is kind of a modeled area of where I'm going to be painting some flowers and that basically is starting a technique more like what a fine artist would do and now we'll come in and we'll refine it start uh, start the strokes so this already rather than starting basing in a strokes or a bowl or something like that with strokes this already starts to loosen up my my whole feeling of uh, this particular flower or these flowers here so 
Uh, now what I'm going to do is one of the things I like to do is set the centers. So I'm going to come in here. Let's come in with like a, let's start with that peach one. Some red, some real red color, maybe some quinacridone and my red violet. I like that. And I didn't clean my brush. I have water here to clean my brush if I want. But I just, I just wipe my brush with a paper towel. And then I'm going to come in here and pick up this color. And this is what I'm going to, and I'm going to stroke more this time. Up and around and let this uh, kind of fade around up there at the top. That will be the, the throat of the rose, the center of the rose. Let's put a bit of this down here for the bowl of the rose down through here. And I'll do just casual strokes. Sometimes I'll stick my finger into it like that. Okay, but we're gonna, the main part is that the, the strokes, we have, the decorative strokes that we apply to the top of the rose here, on top of all this, are going to really give the shape. Let's darken it cool it even a little bit more go to our red violet and let's come in here and put some red violet just as long as it looks darker and cooler it's good color to use to your center here and let's put a little bit down here to the bottom side of this rose that'll be pretty coming down here we might even take a a bit of that color right into the very deep part of our other rose up here that looks pretty good up there and uh this one right here that might be a, a bit of a rosebud starting to open up. Let's put a kind of a circle center there and a little cooler color down at the bottom there. And we'll just keep that very casual here. Very, very casual. Let's take, let's not even clean the brush. Let's take some blue. Let's come right over here to the blue. Some blue and some of that red violet makes kind of a, a beautiful dark blue violet or purpley kind of color. And let's add some of that right in here. It's just real casual type. Don't even blend it out. Just you can push it around with your finger, but let some of that sit very casual back here. Just as some darks. And that might be a bit dark there, which to change that, I'll just add a little bit of light to that, a little bit of white, and push that color up there like that. And let's push a little bit of that color out here into that let's push a little darker color down towards the bottom of it here and that'll give us a nice base to paint some stroke flowers up on up on top of that there another thing is when you have some of those light colors like that always think about carrying um, the color and so here I might hit a bit of that into a few areas onto the other flowers right there just to, to help carry some of that color. Now, I'm gonna clean that, that colors out of my brush here. And we'll come back in and we'll start looking at how we're going to uh, stroke and stuff some of our, our flowers here. And I might just take this and clean off my palette here for a second, clean off my little area here. Let's just leave that there. And uh, let's come in and let's say, okay, we're gonna go to a lighter red. So let's take some of our red and we'll make a nice, beautiful, light, warm red. This is naphtha red light and white. I can go more towards the orange side. I can cool it just a little bit with some quinacridone because this first rose we put on, I put on with the the uh, red and quinacridone. So we'll start up here with, with some of that. We'll start here and see where that uh, where that is gonna go. Now I don't wanna go, probably don't wanna go that light. It's a little light, so. Let me darken it down a bit here with a little bit more quinacridone. We'll build the, the bowl of the rose. Now sometimes I will draw the line out like this and uh, start the rose a nice casual bit to the rose. Uh, you know, with a stroke flower, sometimes I'll edge it like this and I'll make the individual petals up like this of the stroke flower. But this is the represents the front of the, the bowl of the rose. And I'm just gonna round down like this to uh, kind of base in what we what we consider the bowl of the rose here. Now I wanna I I don't want to stroke perfect. I want to relax my strokes. But you know, unlike some of the other flowers that you see me paint um, in the other videos, stuff where I'm doing painted simply roses and stuff. This time I'm going to be curving my brush. This is one of the things that makes it a a uh, a stroke flower as opposed to a a uh, real casual impressionistic flower is the stroke actually curves the brush here. Now for that center, let's go a little bit more of our quinacridone here 
maybe a touch of our of our red violet just to help keep that dark and let's put in just a bit of that nice casual let's carry a color there and let's just carry it down here on the sides as well here okay so that uh, cools that down and then we'll come out and I'll find a little bit of that color that I can uh, start the uh, the outside petals here as well so let's just kind of stroke them in I'll curve the petal a little bit I'm thinking here pulling to the base or the bowl of my rose the base here uh, with stroke flowers and stuff sometimes I do pull out but I'll curve I'll curve the brush here slightly that's really what makes that the uh, a stroke rose a stroke flower here is the curving of these petals here so I'll curve these just a bit here like that put those in and uh, let's darken down just a bit of that as we come down here to the side get a little bit more red violet matter of fact I might even let that be just a little brighter and we can do when I come down here we can do more of the lost edge that you will find you will find in uh, more heading more towards the art less of the stroke more of the lost edge that you find in art so really what I'm going to do is is kind of combine both here now sometimes I'll set a center back in just to loosen it up and then pick out some more dark and come back through again with another technique I like to do that as I'm building flowers so that I can you know set more lights more darks so I'm work a work an area now let's come with some more light a little bit warmer here let's step back here and let's build the front petal of it and again this is where we curve our brush slightly so you'll see the bowl here kind of curve just a bit to the petal now sometimes I'll do this on the brush I'll come in and I'll slide like that and I pick up this little corner you'll see it just on the corner of the light and that's where I use that corner of the light here like this to kind of draw the petals of the rose around like that or I'll draw the petals of the rose here up like this maybe one or two little strokes here and just give an impression of the strokes let's come down since we're going towards the bottom let's go this way darken that down just a bit and we'll put on another petal here stroking this way building the the uh, bottom of the bowl of that rose here but leaving some of the stroke the strokes that you see there that's what I want to I want to do let's come back over and warm up just a bit maybe a bit of extender that's getting just a touch sticky on me here so when it starts to get too sticky or grab too much I put a little extender in it let's come over here and build the uh, the light petal here the light edge on that flower here let's build the light here here and sometimes pull that out get that nice and casual there but uh, you'll see it has more of a, a structured shape to it and that's what a lot of stroke flowers do they have a structured shape to it but I want to uh, relax that shape that's what I'm planning on doing here with this one is relax that shape a bit here and uh, pull some out there like that but relax that shape so that it has a little bit different feel to it than our traditional stroke flowers now I'll lighten up when you get light the rule is basically in stroke flowers as you get lighter the area in which you stroke gets smaller so I'll come in here and I'll stroke a little smaller flower petal here let's come over to this side and let's just put in a, a little bit of a stroke curving it right down there like that let that come in like that that's kind of pretty and um, let's maybe edge this right in here like that now let's step in this side leave that lower one let's step in here and put on another petal coming just about like that here a lighter smaller petal and if you notice here between this and some of the other flowers that I paint for you here on the on the channel is I'm working just one flower here usually I work you know a couple of flowers the same time and, and work it and uh, here with the stroke flowers I will generally put in some some uh, you know one flower and 
work it around because you want to work it just you want the stroke it while a little bit of the flower is wet you know I can always add extender or I can paint them globally and stuff but if I you know paint them like this it works pretty well I'm gonna get just a little bit lighter here I don't need to warm this too much because I have such a cool side on this that it uh, doesn't really need to be warm but this I'm just gonna relax this whole edge here this is this little stroke flower like that and um, let's just put a little bit more light right up here onto this edge of this one and uh, I can come in and you know hit some extra little strokes or something like that to uh, put on a, a petal maybe take just a little bit of my darker color there come back and forth with that get this light edge in here let's build that up just a bit more here like that and a little bit of texture is really good too so here I'm building just a nice light right up to the front so you see the the lighter you get the smaller you stroke onto a stroke flower like this and you can see this is already beginning to dry up just a little I can stop that by mixing in some uh, extender medium here and just reworking that again but uh, and, and keeping that flowing right there with the wet but sometimes I go ahead and let it dry up doesn't hurt anything and let's just work a little bit of that color in like that I got rid of too much of that stroke look so I'm just gonna put that back in I do want to preserve some of the stroke look though because that's the history of these flowers the strokes here and they you know artists use the variety of tools and 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 uh, brushes and uh, strokes and stuff to create flowers and I've spent my whole life studying all the different styles of flowers that they would do and everything I'm gonna put just a little stroke of shadow there and um, just to add a bit to that flower let's put just a touch of a round stroke kind of into the the center up in there and I want to take some of this cool like this and push back this this one just a bit so I'll, I'll stroke into it from the opposite way just like that and send it to the back now I'm maybe sometimes what I'll do is is take a little edge of the color like this and and hit this is something that I I didn't do on older stroke styles but I do do today in more relaxed styles let's just hit a a bit of the flower out like that that makes it kind of pretty let's come up to this peach color kind of one here we'll add some yellow right into this that nice warm yellow the yellow and and quinacridone is really pretty it makes a beautiful beautiful kind of a peach color here let's come in and and take a stroke of that here first I love this color and around curve your strokes kind of set your bowl in there curving your strokes let's lighten up just a bit here let's set a lighter color a little bit lighter get a little smaller here set that in there's a petal there now I can take a, a cool color let's right here and I can lift up a bit here um, which is one thing I never did in the older strokes but I do do it in this one here and that really makes it look pretty let's go back towards our uh, let's go Hansa yellow and our quinacridone here so it's a little different than our base let's come in here and let's build a petal of this one coming in pulling in and you notice I pull into the into the bowl of that rose but the thing is you curve with the with stroke flowers you can curve the strokes here you know and, and pull in like that and set the the flower in the shape of the flower in like that let's come in I think these are real pretty ways to vary stroke flowers today so those of you that have a long history of strokes like I do we can have some fun with learning some new variations to strokes now since this is my shadow side I'm gonna relax the edge back over here which is something we don't do too much in strokes but we do in this and uh, let's take this and add a little bit of cool to this put that together back there and push that right into the center here of the flower curved strokes right around like that that's great let's come back to the front quinacridone haunts of yellow here come right back to the front here and um, 
Let's lighten that up a bit here. I don't worry about making the same color. I worry about, you know, am I making a color that looks nice? And I'm going to just edge the corner here like this and put just a bit lighter edge to the, the front of that stroke flower. Then I'll take a look what that looks like. Let's lighten that back up and let's just put a little stroke of light right there, a bit more, maybe uh, a bit of light stroking right here to this side and let it let it fade off that's the beauty of the stroke flowers today let it fade off let's do a smaller lighter set of petals here let's get a little bit more light a little more fun maybe a touch more Hansa into that brighten it just a bit here let's push some of this light in some of that goes right in here Maybe a light petal out here. And it's not coming into the bowl there very well. So now I could, you know, and I could use some Paint It Simply techniques, which, you know, we use on the roses and stuff. It's just push your, just push that. You know, it's, it's a little bit dry, a little sticky, and that's what makes it really pretty. Is you just pull that color like that, and that makes it just a really nice bowl into there that thick color and it's you know it's almost dry right down through here so you have to push a bit there but it all comes out and it looks wonderful sometimes it works really well let's come in and uh, and if it doesn't just add a little extender over that because that will uh, brighten it up let's add just a touch more of our light right here and get just an edge more see I picked that up right on the edge of the brush there and I use that edge just to kind of draw that in just a touch there and that will give you a little bit more of the stroke look here let's let's draw one around just kind of like we did on the other one there let's kind of draw one right in there a little stroke and let's put a little cool into our brush just like we did on that one and just pull right in there like that a little bit of that cool and incorporate that right into the flower and then a few little marks of that over here let that flower just kind of loosen up there a bit there like that and we have another little smaller light direction to it um, do you want to put any of that light back here it's a little dangerous you just maybe a couple of strokes just to say you did it here you can stick your finger in it like that but Keep the curved angle to it for the stroke. Sometimes I'll come back, take that edge, that corner like this of the light, and I may come right in here and push some of that light right on the edge of the lower petal, the under petal here that's underneath because that brings that right to the front there like that. Sometimes I do that. I'm going to lighten this one up just a touch more just because so it sits lighter than that red one there. So this will be the light rose. When I first kind of imagined these flowers, I was going to have the red one kind of the lightest. But, you know, things happen when you paint and it changes. There we go. And uh, I'll cool down right over here. I add a little extender to this right here so it loosens up. And I'll just put just a bit of that cool into my brush. And I'm just going to curve this around like that just to paint that bowl right around like that. So that'll paint that bowl in there and curve it. That adds just a bit of that shadow right there, which I, I kind of like. It lifts that shadow back up there. I might put a bit of that out here so it looks like back petals and stuff. That's kind of nice. Now let's just very casually, let's take our red and our quinacridone here. Um, now if you want to tone it down, green's your main thing. Green. Because green and the reds are complements. So this will tone this down. Let's soften this down, tone it down here a bit. And let's just put in a soft. We'll use just a little bit of light, but I want this flower to sit further to the back here. Uh, so maybe just a bit of the light. You can even toss a little bit of your peach color there into that. And uh, let's just, now I'm going to, I'm probably, because I'm not going to turn my piece on this one. So I'll probably stroke this one in reverse here like this. I'll curve those strokes. I'll build what is, you know, like the um, bowl of the rose there. Maybe put a couple of strokes 
back here just for colors. I like to uh, keep this very soft. Um, sometimes, let me tone this red violet. How would you tone it? Tiny bit of green. Let's push, let's open this flower back up. I was, it could be a rosebud and push in more of an oval shape. We can just leave it like that and push in a, a couple of petals right here. So it's a, a bit of a smaller rose here. Curve your strokes in, lift off, touch and lift off, touch and lift off. Like that. Let's lighten that just a bit up here into the front. So we have just a gentle light here. But I'm not going to develop the flower like I do the other two here because I want this one to be softer and sit back behind here. But I will give a little curvature to the petals here. That's what helps make it look like a stroke rose here, like that. Let's put just a touch out here. Smaller, lighter petals pull into the bowl. Smaller, lighter petals and let those fade away like that. That'll be pretty. Maybe a, just a touch or two of, not the lightest, just some of the, the, the other color. So I'm out here. I'll come reach right out to here to where it's a little darker because I want it to be softer and touch a little color back out there and let that rose just sit there very soft. It's got a big center in it here, so if I don't close it up, I should put some kind of center in it. And I'm just going to close it up here with a few strokes, just like that. Just a, And it doesn't have to be much, just movement. That's all I'm painting for, it's just movement here. Um, maybe one more cool kind of a light. Just, just a touch more light. I've got to be careful here. I don't want it as light as the other ones here and um, I can uh, push that cooler let's even take a little bit of our center color that cool red violet and just paint your round part of your bowl right in there like that and that shoves that flower right there to the back yeah so that does that so it gives me just a, a bit here that I can lighten up just a touch here Right like that. That's kind of pretty. Let's put that. I have a little bit of dirty blue into the color there, and that's really pretty. That little bit of blue is a, just a real pretty, kind of cooled it down and still made it kind of pretty. So now you can pull a stroke across if you want, you know, something across or curve that up. But I'm going to keep this, let's just keep that more simplistic so that flower sits back. Now, so those flowers sit in there. I could I could define this more if I'm really thinking stroke. I really probably should define this center up here a little bit more towards a, a stroke, a feeling of a stroke. That's a bit casual there. So that's good. Let's go. Let's uh, go back and revisit that top one. A little yellow and a little white. Some of this pink here. Cool it down just a bit. Let's go a little bit lighter. Let's revisit this real quick with a another little light stroke, right like that. Uh, maybe a bit lighter. And if you notice, what I do is I touch. You know, before we touch and stroke, and what I do is touch and lift off. And it, it's what we call the granulated. It lifts off, and you will sometimes get a real granulated look to the flower which um, makes it kind of pretty. So you're, you're basically, instead of uh, with a lot of the other flowers that I paint, I make what I call colored marks onto them. These, I make little strokes, little touching strokes. That's what, that's what we call them stroke flowers. And of course, in the other ones, you know, that I did in other trays and stuff like that, once it's over there, we did, uh, I, I did more perfect stroke. So now this one is stroke, but it's very, very relaxed. Now, the other thing is when you start to look at the flowers here, like this, step back and look at them, you know, the, you, they need to have a, a certain amount of harmony to it. And I'm going to do that right now. So I'll go back where I add some of that yellow. Let's come back up here off to the side just a bit here. And let's just add a touch of this yellowy stroke from the uh, this flower right over into this one. And the same thing 
over into this one a bit of that yellowy flower so what that does is it starts to add a commonality to it now this is something that stroke artists of old didn't always do as a matter of fact they very seldom did but it's something that we think as flower painters today of thinking the harmony so it's kind of a nice bridge of the techniques and that's what i do is i'll take the techniques of the old update them to today's uh you know more uh, better techniques and stuff so I enjoy that. Now, let's come back in and let's let's go right over here to the blues and let's take some of our whites. We'll make some different blues. Since I have so much red, I might take put some some um go over towards the blue violet kind of colors or violet kind of colors. Those are pretty. We'll vary this with some quinacridone here, some of our blues and put in some of these colors cuz these would be real pretty into this painting some of these colors first i'm just going to just model up some of this since it's a different color i'm just going to model some of this around into here uh just push it around here so that we see it and then we'll go in and we'll we'll paint in here kind of perfect now we'll see some of those colors let's uh see a little bit more blue every once in a while so let's see that blue here. Then we'll go in and paint little flowers and stuff. We have little leaves and little flowers to paint. Now we can come in. Let's take a little bit of our quinacridone and some of our blue. These are pretty colors in here. Nice. We'll, we'll keep the flowers a bit onto the light side here. And we'll just do little stroke flowers. Little little pull in little flowers like that. You know, and, and I'll do petals on one edge and then I'll let them... Sometimes I'll edge a little bit of white like this into the edge of that petal so that as I pull it, I'll get a little difference. Let's come right out over here. So I'll get a little difference to it. So we'll have some light colors here. I'll establish a couple of light flowers. Then we'll make some a little bit more blue, darker ones that are coming out here. There's one coming there. Let's get a little some to the quinacridone side here. So we'll get a, a bit different color, little strokes coming out here, lost little little edges of flowers. You can come back a touch more white and hit just a few little petals to bring them up a little closer here. There, like that. I like to do that. Uh, let's get some of that variation out here. So I don't go in and paint a tremendous amount of flowers i'm going to let some of these marks that i put in here earlier just be suggestive of flowers little stroke flowers here will be a little suggestive which again is something that we we didn't do in the stroke painting of old which is what we do today to give us some nice variation to the flowers art and, and art whether you're a decorative painting or stroke painting or doing whatever art should always grow and evolve and change it always has it has throughout history there's only a couple of styles that uh, never really changed in the the generations that they've been painting and some of those styles are gone they they just have no interest because they didn't change and um you know you you don't see them painted today so but art itself always changes and evolves it's like one of my teachers always said, art is not, it, it, society isn't static, and so it's constantly changing, and, and art shouldn't be static as well. It should always be changing. I'm putting in a little bit of some violets and stuff in here, just because violets are pretty, violets are different, and they add a, a bit of different look to these little flowers coming in, and they're they're airing them up and giving some different little look so and I'll, then I'll maybe you know apply a couple of light like strokes like there'll be a couple of little flowers like that or you know maybe I'll take some of this light right out here like that and just drag some of this down like that uh, let's make it a little lighter maybe to the blue side I'll show you up over here and uh, you know you might have a few little light flowers or ideas of them just generate out here like this through the painting take your eye out that's a bit much so I'll just stick my finger in it there and uh, 
this represents the new way to, as a different way to add some of those nice flower type uh, looks out here. A little different. Let's get some of those colors back out through here like that. If you pick those up, you know, the artist might just toss a little bit out like that. Real pretty little uh, stuff. In, in, you know, the old times we would put the flowers out like this, let them descend, and you'd see this real clarity to them. Now I'm going to let those edges and stuff soften and fade away and, uh, you know, have a, a have a real good casual look to them. Now let's um, come in and let's work on some of our greens. Some yellow greens, some blue greens, you know, you can take some of these yellow greens right into some of these colors and that makes just beautiful softer greens right out here that you can use to help, uh, you know, generate leaves and stuff. Now that one doesn't show up too much, so, uh, but I'm going to make, I'm going to start with some cool maybe slightly blue green, blue thalo blue, pine green, and some red violet here. We'll start with a cooler, darker green and maybe make some, uh, you know, more of a traditional type leaf shape, a few of those, and, you know, maybe a, a few stems out here like this to, uh, you know, pull those through and drag through those like that. And, um, I'll add a few little touches of this green, but I want to I want to make some uh, defined stroke shapes. I'm just going to add a little water to my brush here. You can add water or the um, um, extender medium, but I'm going to add some more defined kind of oval stroke shapes, pulling to like the center of the leaf here. And so I'm going to add a few more traditional of what we think is more traditional leaf shape. Sometimes I pull out, sometimes in. I'll, since I'm not turning my board, it's kind of like whatever I can sneak into there at that time. Maybe uh, take just a little bit of dark and drag that up and through like it's a little stem or something right there. Let's um, come back up here to our lighter yellow greens. You can tone it with any of your colors here. Now this is starting to get just a bit tacky, but not too bad. I can add a little extender there to keep that open longer. But uh, we can come up through here and add some lighter little touches. Um, I want to do more pine green and yellow up here. You have to find a color that's going to lift off or, 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 you know, come off of the background as well. So. You know, these this brighter green won't come off the background, but it can look really nice up in here to loosen up some of our little blue flowers here. So you might want to touch some of that right out through there, a little bit right out in through here. And you can do more, um, you know, more defined strokes and stuff with it. Um, you know, I might make a, uh, let's come back this way and make a, more defined, more beautiful stroke leaf here, right up into the center there. And um, and again, you can make it, you know, a perfect little oval and stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to put a couple of these leaves out, one out this side, one going out this way. That one's going to sit underneath this rose there. That one will sit over the rose. Let's get a little yellow and a little white. Let's put in a touch of a highlight here touch and lift off here put in just a touch of light into that one and again I like to dirty it I like a, a touch of that red and stuff to come out every once in a while here we go maybe use the chisel of the brush here and put in a, a mark for the vein line sometimes if the mark is a little big I'll just sneak a little dark next to it there and set it back uh, I sometimes pick up that little edge of light and use that as a little mark for the other side of the leaf here, like that. If I want to, you know, keep that more stroke look to it there. And pull that in and out there just a bit. That's kind of pretty. And uh, let's put some on this other one here. Coming out this way. Here. And a little mark there for a little idea of a 
leaf and then I'll just stroke in like that just a but it's nice and varied little stroke there like that let's uh add a few of the light little marks little light leaves and marks right out through here and that just uh, that might be a bit light but what that does is just uh lightens up or airies up the design here let's darken down cool it and darken it down just a bit drag that's just a little too dark so over to my yellows here and see i can look at it right here and say okay this is where i'm getting it light again look yeah that's a nice green form a bit of the leaf shape there maybe a bit lighter out on the edge if we want to stroke in like that put a bit of that light out like that make that light little chisel there a little bit of a vein line which is something you find in those stroke flowers and stuff you find those little vein lines let's add just a few little marks push some back some lights and dark interests into the outside out here like that light and dark interests light and dark interest out here just loosens that up a bit there that's kind of fun um <clears throat> lighter if this is going to be up at our light side or which it should because we have a lot of light that's right up through here so um let's get a bit more of our light yellow green up here and uh, push that into the brush and we'll give some lighter let's give more defined shapes to our leaves right up here more of that stroke oval shape here there's one coming out that way maybe a smaller one coming up this way here like that pulling to that center let's uh, change the color just a touch maybe a touch darker here that's not going to show up too much so let's go back towards the light a bit add another one right here maybe a smaller one coming off this way here like that you can have that trinity of leaves where the three come out very popular in strokes and uh, now you can put a, a touch or two let's take a little blue in the green and sometimes i will put a a, a darker little vein line or a darker uh, little sh a stroke here right up around almost like a negative painting up like we talk about in the mastering roses series it's you know around the outside and you know you can still put a light vein line or you can put touch a little dark vein line too both of those work and you know as an artist if you're very you know the thing is to paint the vein line and if you vary it a bit you know sometimes those are real pretty because that variation just adds interest into your painting so let's add a little few extra little marks out there like that little um hansa yellow let's tone that down a bit of red I didn't use black too much today you can have a tiny touch of black and that red together really tones that haunts it down nice because it takes it more towards a brownish kind of color but I'm just gonna pick up a, a bit of this modeled into the brush here start up here and just touch in some of this color now I know that one is a little bright up there you're going hey Dave that's a little bright I realize that I'm just going to tap around a few little centers here first and we'll go back and correct that here let's make that just a bit brighter grab some of that see just a bit of that now I'll just push in some of the brown color into my brush here and just kind of tap right into that one until I get it down right about where I want that to be and this one I want just a touch lighter, so I'm just going to pick up a tiny bit of Hansa and just hit the edge of that one. And I'll adjust each one kind of where I want it. Maybe, you know, look through and say, okay, I want these to have a touch of Hansa to them. Maybe that one right there. And which other ones I want to be toned down a little bit more. And if some get too big, just take a bit of your 
violet colors here and light here like this makes a pretty little pretty little painting you could have your and just tap through just touch through and take some of that out take some of those that yellow out just a bit here and there this softens it out took that one out too much so I'll just add a little bit of yellow and that's why I really like this to step back with this casual brush and just touch them little bits like that Get a little thing now you can when you're looking at it you can decide you know do you want to make it uh, do you want to make it lighter right now it's it's pretty rich looking um, you know you have to decide do you want the flowers a bit lighter very easy thing to do even if some of the strokes and stuff are are um, are dry you can come back and work them again and put stuff in I'll show you on a couple of them here um, one of the things is some of my colors here are starting to dry up now you know the beautiful thing about the heritage is I can take some of the extender here and work right through it and you can see that starts to loosen this all up and it will it will start to all come back up to workable again but a lot of times that just gets a it's just a bit of a hassle for me to do so I don't I don't worry I mean I don't try to reconstitute too much if it starts to get too dry just push it off to the side there and because I'm an artist that I don't like all the all the colors to always be coming back the same anyway so um, and I'm uh, kind of running out of white there so we'll have to reach over and just let me reach over here and uh, grab some out and head it all the way here to the other side of the the uh, studio there but we'll squirt that out there and we'll lighten up here and uh, yeah that's kind of pretty color now I can tone that down a bit or anything but boy that's kind of a nice pretty bright color a little bit of yellow into that that's that's pretty we put that in the side of that one rose let's lighten up just a bit here and we can overstroke like right into here we can overstroke here like this and lighten that up now you know right there that's that's kind of kind of working down in there kind of nice uh, if, if it doesn't if you're too light and you come back in again if it doesn't look like oh, okay that's maybe too light then drop back down what we call half tones and strokes and so in fine art and stuff we use what we call half tone strokes all the time to soften something out so we put a stroke of a half tone in there to soften something out and so you can see that half tone strokes even works right here inside of this real light side right here so you know in looking at it I have to decide do I want my flowers there just a bit lighter and I think I do so this edge right here could be a bit lighter a bit more contrast a bit more punch here and because of the whole painting here now I can just come right back out here to like a little half tone and stroke back out the other way and soften that back and forth even though this flower is completely dry and I can get a real pretty little look into that flower even sometimes generate other colors uh, because you know if I if I don't try to make the same color the flower will really become more pretty because you get some of these other little looks and colors and stuff into it so sometimes little half tones like that are pretty lift up from the the bottom edge of the bowl with something that's a little cooler and a little darker and we call that a, a half tone I can even put in a little edge here of light let's come in with a, a bit more edge of the light right here like this and create another little edged petal like that that's kind of pretty drag that through there was that extra petal that we put in there we can come back and just take a stroke a nice little curve stroke see I got the light right there put the light up at the top so you can stroke through that right there like that and if I want that to incorporate I put a little bit of that cool color right on the side and just pull right down through there like that and now you have these little petals and I like that 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 uh, that flower here's lightening up now I can take that little corner with just a touch of color and push that to the next one or the next one or the next one right up here as well just a little touch of it will brighten that up let's uh, go over towards our peach color which is our yellow and our quinacridone here 
Let's get a little bit more towards the yellow into that. Let's add some of that nice white into that. And let's lighten up the top one. We'll leave this one kind of where it is. We'll leave that, that one. But let's lighten up, head just a bit more to the white right here. Let's light, that's a bit of a drippy white there. Let's add a bit more light right in here. There we go, pull that in. That's kind of pretty here. Try not to lean in and into the camera here. I'm sorry if I've done that a few times. But I've never painted stroke flowers in the in this particular studio. I've always, we have another filming studio over there with the downshot camera, and I usually use that in all of my videos. So this is one of the first times that I painted, uh, well, it is the first time that I painted the stroke cameras in this, uh, stroke flowers in this thing with here. So if I lean over and get my head in there like that, I'm sorry. Well, we'll fi I'll figure it out. Give me some time, I'll figure it out. But uh, it's because I, I like to lean over it with the other one, the camera set, so that your head doesn't get in the way. So, But here, if I've done that a few times, I'm sorry about that. So we'll put that in. You can cool that off here. And, um, and again, you cool that off, and you can lift that color out here. You know, a little bit of that cooler color lifting off. And isn't that a pretty color that goes inside of that there? Let's put a, a, a touch more of a light edge uh, to these outside and then maybe to the inside there and then I think we'll call this this quick little flower here done this little stroke here and I like and you can see sometimes you get that little granulation I really like that it's just a lift I'm, sometimes curve your brush around that's really what makes it the stroke flowers is the curve is the painting on the curve as opposed to some of the other ways that I do it. But, you know, a lot of people think, oh, stroke flowers are, or, you know, you, you paint them like a comma stroke. No, that's not true. They, they just have the curvature and stuff to them. But yeah, let's just darken that down. Let's put that bit of that pink from that one right into there. And let's just come right into that petal there, pull that in, maybe drag my finger right there like that. That makes a pretty little and uh, I can just give little light edges like that. Just, you know, indicate little light edges. You can, uh, I mean, those quick little edges like that. I love them. And I'll do it right here just to, to say, boom, there's some. And it just adds a bit to it. A little bit than what a, different than what a, uh, you know, your traditional older stroke styles of flowers, you know, will look like. So when I... You know, you look at a flower here, let's look at these two together. You can see this is the older Napoleon III style of stroking the flower. And here it is lightened up a little bit more. You can see how to do both, but you can see one has more, uh, this one that I paint today has a little bit more casual edges to it, has a little bit more light direction to it. Uh, it's a very fun style to paint. You can try it on all different kinds of stuff. I'm painting it pure acrylic um, here. And, uh, you know, even though it's completely dry, you can come back and work that again, just like I show you, with a half tone. And a half tone is a tone that's halfway between, if you put on a stroke and it's light, then you look at the light, you look at the dark, and you put on a color that's halfway between the two and lift up to, towards the light, and that's what softens it up. That's a very beautiful type of technique, okay? Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want some of these things and, and look for more of our stuff, to, this go right on down below. In the description down below the video, click that there and you'll find some of the links. I really would appreciate it if you drop a comment to us and subscribe to our uh, channel because that helps our channel grow. The more subscribers and the more content we get or comments, as you comment, if you take just a minute and comment, then YouTube recognizes that that is a, a wonderful video. People are commenting on it and those con they start to give more distribution and that helps us. So please take a moment and comment on the video. We would really would appreciate that and subscribe to the channel. We'd like to do that, okay? And look for more of our lessons coming back to the channel here in the next couple of weeks as we're, we're gonna we're gonna go everywhere i'm gonna go back to do some landscapes and seascapes and wildlife painting with you as well all right thanks very much for joining me take care click those links down there below and have a great day and if you have any if you have any questions just comment for us okay Alrighty, i'll take you talk to you later bye bye
Thank you.